Hey guys, this is the Rabbit Taco. Tonight I wanted to bring you a quick tutorial on GTuner Pro, uh, specifically the GPC blocks, because this is a great way to start if you don't know how to write code and you want to write a mod for a game fairly quickly. As long as it's not too complex of a, uh, of a mod, you should be able to do it here in GPC blocks. Um, if you find this video useful, please click like, leave me some comments down below, let me know what you think of it, uh, any questions you might have. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. That being said, let's jump right into this. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to create an advanced rapid fire that, depending on whether or not you are scoped in, depends on how fast you're going to fire a weapon. To do that, we'll go to Rapid Fire X. It's already pre-built, which makes that portion of it really easy. Um, basically, you have an if and the get. Basically, it's saying if you're holding a button in, so in this case, it's Xbox One right trigger. So if you're holding Xbox One right trigger, and if we're holding the left trigger, then Turbo RT, the right trigger, hold it for 40 seconds, and then release it for 120 sec milliseconds. So every 40, it's going to fire for 40 milliseconds, and it's going to simulate you letting go of it for 120 milliseconds, hold it again for 40 milliseconds, and repeat this process. If you're not holding the left trigger, that's where the else comes into play. It's going to hold the right trigger for 40 millisecond, and then it's going to release it for only 40 millisecond. This increases the fire rate. So let's say you're hip firing and you, you're going to fire much faster. If you're scoped in and you're looking for more precision, we slow down the fire rate. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now, the, the thing that I've started seeing a lot is a lot of people asking, how do we toggle this on and off during gameplay? So let me give you a quick demonstration on how to do that. It's really easy. We're going to pull out another if do. And as you can see, I mean, it just snaps right together, kind of like little puzzle pieces. We're going to look at the logic, and because we want to do this, most of the time I tend to personally use two buttons as a combination to turn it on and off. It makes it so that you don't accidentally bump something and accidentally turn it off and you're getting all frustrated trying to figure out what the heck happened. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to get, and like I said, this is get simulates, okay, the button is being held down. Um, so we're going to look at L2. Uh, usually that's your ADS, so you're really not messing with too much. And we're going to look at Event Press. This is a quick tap of a button, a little bit different. Get is holding it down. Event Press is just quickly tapping it. And we're going to use D-pad right. So what we're going to do inside of that now is we're going to set a toggle. So another if do. And what we're going to look at is and the logic, and we're going to check a value. So we want to have an equals here. Uh, you click it down, you have equal, not equal, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. So you have a lot of other options here. We're going to look at trace. Trace in GPC box is your variable. So what we want to do is we want to look at the get again, go trace one in here. And what that's saying is get the value of trace one in this case. You want to read your math, and if you plot the zero here, that is just a numerical representation. So we're going to say, okay, so get the value of trace one is equal to zero. Then set the value of trace one equal to one. So set trace one to plot the zero. We'll just change that to a one. There you go. So now we've toggled it to that. Now if it's already equal to one, obviously we want to be able to set it back to zero. This is going to be our on-off switch. So we we'll look at this and we're going to go, okay, so if it's already set that way, then we're going to pull out that. Again, trace one. Come back to math and pull this out, we'll set it to zero. So that's all there is to it. Now that just very quick, very easy says, okay, if I'm pressing L2 and or if I'm holding L2 and I press right, if it's equal to zero, then set it to one. If it's already set to one, then we're going to set it back to zero. 
Now this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. We have to take this little block off because we have to increase this because we want to put an AND there. So if we go back to logic, we have this over here. So we pop that into place. We can put get right back inside of it. But now this is saying, okay, so if we have the right trigger and go back to logic, we'll need to get the value of trace one. And I did mess that up a little bit because we do need to put one more piece in here. We need to have know what trace one is equal to. So we'll do this, get, value, get the value of trace one if it's equal to, in this case we'll use, uh, we'll use one, we'll have it off by default, and use the value equal to one. So now what we're saying is, if you're holding down the right trigger and the value of trace one is equal to one, then we're going to go ahead and do the rapid fire. Uh, if trace one is equal to zero, it's not going to get down into this inner block you're not going to have rapid fire. Uh, to test this, you can have your Type 1 connected. Uh, mine is at its current time. And I know I've seen this come up a lot, and this has caused a lot of confusion for people. Uh, as you can see, my script here has PS4 entries, and it has Xbox One entries. The deal is, is that those are just more placeholders. Uh, there's an underlying code that will work for either one. There's some subtle differences that don't always carry over, but in the most cases you can use the PS4, Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360. You can use all those interchangeably. If you're looking in the online library, you see a script and everything says PS4, it will work on the Xbox One 99% of the time. Uh, so just to show this, when we just click the triangle, that's a build and run. It's going to bring up my device monitor. Now, the right side, or left side, is what your controller input is. The right side shows what's going to go out to the PlayStation 4. If you click any of these, like R2, now you see it LH red, and you see the red line across the bottom. Uh, if I pick up my controller and I press R2, you see that, okay, it matches on both the right and left hand sides. Plus 81, plus 81, hold L2. L2 is 100 on both sides. If I hit right though, let go and go back to R2, you'll see on the left hand side it's kind of fluctuating between 83 and 84. My right trigger is kind of screwed up. But my R2 on the left, right hand side is blinking very, very fast between 100 and 0. That's the script we just put into place. Now if I hold L2, you notice across the bottom there's a little bit more spacing. That's where our fire rate slowed down. If I hit right again, it goes to a flight even bar. So that shows right there our on off switch is working. It's doing exactly what we wanted it to. We can speed it up, slow it down, turn it on and off. All done without having to touch a piece of code. Uh, really just as simple as putting together puzzle pieces. To move this over to your Titan 1, I'm going to clear a spot here. You're going to take visual scripting, just drag it over to an empty slot, program device. Wait a few seconds here. It does write this extremely fast, which is really nice. As you can see, it's already done. Fill up our device monitor. You can see here that we can just cycle through all the slots. So we've got a slot one where we put it. Again, if I press R2, by default it was turned off and we're getting exactly what we expected. If I hold L2, press right, rapid fire is now working. If I hold L2 down, it slows down. If I press right, it turns off, turn back on. There you go, we just wrote an advanced rapid fire with an on off switch for in game play. Didn't have to write really any code, it was just a matter of dragging and dropping blocks. Uh, again, if you have any questions regarding this, if you want any more detail, if you need help writing the script, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video.